Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome and thank you for attending, and we greatly appreciate it. I am Siobhan Andrews, student president of the new University of Arizona Global Campus Women in STEM organization. As an information technology student here, I am thrilled to say that the University of Arizona Global Campus Women in STEM is a student-led organization that focuses on STEM careers for women. Our club includes the UAGC Women in Technology International Chapter, better known as WITI, and the UAGC Chapter of Girls Who Code, College Loop. Today, we're gonna to talk about building your legacy. But before we can talk about that, we must define it. So what is a legacy? Well, Miriam Webster describes it as something that is handed down from our ancestors, predecessors, or from the past. So today we're gonna to learn how to build from experiences of our speakers. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to hear their stories. But before we can listen, I would like to thank you again for joining us. And I will pass it over to our officers to introduce themselves as well. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Carrie Seuss, Vice President. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mayan Colden and I am the Secretary. Hi, everyone. My name is Yam Mitchell and I'm your Communication Officer. And hello, everyone. I am Dr. Karen Lynn Daniels IV. I am the department chair of our technology studies organization. We are so excited about this webinar today. Oh my goodness, we are in a position to hear from a set of legacy pioneers who have been extremely, extremely helpful, beneficial, successful within their STEM walks today. One once said that your legacy grows with each new experience, and we are in for a wonderful experience today. So take notes and sit back and you will gain something for sure. This webinar is a historical gathering of legacy STEM pioneers. Thank you to all of our panelists who will be speaking on the panel today. And also thank you to the historically black colleges and universities who are joining us today. Throughout the webinar, we'll have you to place in chat hello. So later on, we can recognize you, your name and the name of your HBCU in attending. And so without any further delay, I would like to welcome to the mic Carrie, who will introduce to us our speakers for the event today. Carrie, the mic is yours. Thank you, Dr. Ivy. Again, good afternoon and welcome. I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our esteemed speakers. While I share their accomplishments, mine will post in the chat full, full bios in each speaker. Our first speaker has dedicated his life to the service of the United States as a Marine Corps Major General and then as a NASA Administrator. Welcome Major General Charles F. Bolden Jr. After graduating from the United States Naval Test Pilot School in 1979, Bolden was selected as an astronaut candidate by NASA then becoming an astronaut in August of 1981. In July of 98, he was promoted to the final rank of Major General and assumed his duties as a Deputy Commander, United States Forces Japan. He later retired from the military in 2004. Fast forward to 2009, he was appointed by President Barack Obama to be the 12th NASA Administrator. Today, he serves as CEO of the Charles F. Bolden Group, LLC, a veteran owned small business specializing in aerospace, national security, leadership, and education. I now pass on the mic to Dr. Karen Ivey. Thanks everyone. And thanks for all of the background on our excellent speakers for today. I'm gonna to pass the mic over to Maya. Hello everyone. Thank you for joining Women in STEM. I am going to, the first going to introduce our net our first speaker, which will be uh, Major General Charles Bolton. Thank you very much, and uh, Dr. Ivy, thanks for inviting me to participate in this session. Uh, I'm actually going to keep my remarks very brief because I want to hear the rest of the speakers. Um, I, I have a special relationship with most of them, uh, particularly Guy and and Ed Dwight. They're both sort of heroes and role models for me. And, uh, and, Dr. Sh and, and Cheryl McNair, um, she knows that I would not be here in this panel today were it not for her late husband, Ron McNair, because um, when I came out of high school in C.A. Johnson High School in Columbia, South Carolina, uh, and finally got to the Naval Academy, 
two things I knew I was not going to do. One was become a Marine. The other one was fly airplanes. Um, uh, and here we are all these years later. And, and I, I, I ended up doing both. So, uh, so I would say to the, to the folk who are participating or listening in to this webinar, um, use that as a lesson. Don't ever say no to anything. Uh, take advantage of every opportunity that's offered to you and, uh, and, and grow, as the saying goes, grow where you're planted. Um, I'll, t I'll tell you the story about Ron. You know, Ron, for those of you who have ever read about him, was a person who always, from, from as early as his family can remember, uh, was going, not wanted to be, but was going to be an astronaut. And uh, the, my favorite story of Ron, because we grew up about 42 miles from each other, he in uh, Lake City, South Carolina, which is a, it's a little town. Um, it, it's, it's, it, if you blink, you miss it when you go through it. And I grew up in the capital city, Columbia, South Carolina, uh, with no desire whatsoever to ever go to space or to be an astronaut. And Ron, uh, knowing that there were certain things that he would need academically, he knew he, he was gonna need physics and he was gonna need uh, calculus. Uh, they did not offer those in Carver High School. We both grew up in the segregated South in the 50s and 60s. Ron's a bit younger than I, but but Ron went to the public library in Lake City and, and asked if he could check out two books, one on calculus and one on physics. And he was politely told by the librarian, no, uh, he could not do, he could do neither. And he was asked to leave. And uh, Ron said, I'm not leaving until I get the two books. And finally, the librarian resorted to uh, calling the local police chief. And Lake City was so small, everybody knew everybody. And the policeman knew Ron and he pleaded with Ron to leave. And he finally, uh, before, he, before he had to do anything drastic, he called over to Carver High School and asked for Mrs. McNair, who was a teacher there. And Mrs. McNair ran over to the library and tried to get Ron to leave and he wouldn't. And uh, finally, the police chief came up with a brilliant idea. He told the librarian, I tell you what, I'll check out the two books and, uh, and I'll bring them back to you when I'm finished with them. And he gave the books to Ron. Ron taught himself calculus and physics. And I guess the rest is history because he went to North Carolina a and where he was an honor grad and then went to MIT where he earned his master's in laser physics, his PhD in laser physics. And um, I had no such aspirations, but I did end up as a test pilot at a place called Patuxent River, Maryland. And the fortune, that, the good fortune that I had was that Ron McNair uh, during his candidacy came back for a reunion at the test pilot school with a number of the Navy and Marine Corps uh, astronaut candidates who had graduated from the from the U.S. Navy's test pilot school, and I saw this this young, uh, strappy-looking, bearded black kid getting out of the back of this this sleek-looking T-38, and I instantly ran over to to meet him because I didn't know Ron before that, and we talked the whole weekend. And before he got ready to get back into his supersonic jet and go back to Houston, he asked me if I was going to apply for the space program. I looked at him and I said, "Not on your life." And he looked at me incredulously and uh, said, why not? I said, Ron, they never pick me. Uh, and he said, you know, that is the dumbest thing I ever heard. How do you know if you don't ask? Um, he embarrassed me more than anything else because my mom and dad, who had been teachers all their lives, my father was my high school football coach who had taught me that uh, he had a saying, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. My mother had taught me you can do anything you want to do if you're willing to study hard, work hard, and never be afraid of failure. Don't ever let anybody else define you or tell you what you can't do. So having been embarrassed appropriately by Ron, he got in his T-38 and they flew back to Houston. And I quickly went home and told my wife, you know what, uh, I'm going to apply for the space program. I, I don't stand a snowball's chance in hell of being selected, but I owe it to my mom and dad and myself to apply. And I did and uh, was startled to find that I was invited to come to Houston and interview for the program. And then even more shocked to find in the end that I was selected. So uh, quick lesson for the young people who are there, uh, never, ever, ever give up on yourself. Uh, never doubt your own capabilities, do what you know how to do, uh, do it well, and, uh, and, and things will work out pretty good, no matter how they do. And I, you're, gonna hear, you're gonna hear a phenomenal story from from Ed Dwight, who, who I said is my hero because things didn't work out exactly the way that, that he thought. But uh, he is the one who smiles now because he is one of the world's greatest sculptors in my mind. And uh, hopefully he's gonna tell you a little bit about 
about how he overcame adversity and is now uh, someone that other people idolize as much as I do. So let me stop there, Dr. Ivy, and uh, pass it off to the next, back to you or, or off to the next speaker. I'm sorry, Mayan, go ahead. Thank you for sharing with us today. I want to thank you all for joining us, answering our questions and showing, just showing us a piece of you and your legacy. So I really appreciate everything. And I'm trying not to cry because I'm, it's excitement and just hearing your story. So I am just so ecstatic about this. So thank you all for joining us today. Next, I'm going to turn it over to Miss Lisa Sims. Thank you, Mayan, and thank you to all our STEM pioneers for sharing your experience with us. I am Lisa Sims, the lead faculty advisor for the Women in STEM, and I know everybody has just been blessed to hear about how our panelists have persevered through their STEM careers, and that has motivated us and encouraged us to do uh, more and to not give up on our journey. And I just want to uh, thank them for being here, and I thank you for being here as well. And I want to encourage you to join the Women in STEM. We have uh, two ways that you can do that. You can join either via uh, UAGC Connect or you can also join via our LinkedIn group, and I will go ahead and put that in the chat. And so that way you can be a part of our organization and you can stay abreast of our events that will be uh, going on so that you won't miss exciting webinars such as this one. And then also I want to invite you to go ahead and save the date for October the 29th from one um, 1 p.m. Pacific time to uh, 2.30 Pacific time, we're going to have our cybersecurity awareness event, and we're going to have panelists from Microsoft who are going to speak to us about different areas of cybersecurity, such as the dark web and other cybersecurity areas that we may or may not be aware of. So I highly want to encourage you to uh, join us there. And I will put the flyer for that event also in the chat so that you can have that and you can go ahead and register for that event. And so with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. And we once again, thank everyone who attended. We thank our STEM pioneers and we thank our attendees for tuning in and stay abreast of uh, what's coming next for the women in STEM. And remember to continue to persevere. And even though you have obstacles, you can overcome those obstacles to do greatness. And so with that, stay blessed and stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and all of our panelists. And we want to also give a special thank you to all of our historical Black colleges and universities who attended with us today. Florida, FMU, thank you for attending, and others who may not have spotted your name in the chat. Thanks to everyone who attended, all of our panelists as well.